everyone, Mike here and this is the Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro. Last year's Yoga 2 was, and still is even today, one of the best in on ultra portables you could get. The Yoga 3 Pro is its thinner and lighter successor, but the new generation is not just a redesigned shell, it's also one of the first ultrabooks built on Intel's Core M hardware. But is it actually any good? Well, stay with me for the next couple of minutes and you'll find out. Let's talk about the aesthetics first. The Yoga 3 Pro is half an inch thick and weighs 2.6 pounds which are impressive numbers for a 13-incher. Its outer case is crafted from aluminum and that gives it a beautiful allure and the sturdiness you would expect from a computer you're probably going to carry with you daily. So for the most part, this laptop feels like it's worth its high price tag. The new Yoga is of course a convertible, just like the previous generations, and its screen flips to 360 degrees, allowing a few different use modes. There's the standard laptop position, the stand, the tent and the tablet mode, but you'll probably use this mostly as a regular notebook. A 13-inch screen tablet might occasionally come in handy, but is not in my opinion very comfortable to use on a daily basis. It's just too large and heavy. Lenovo did redesign the Yoga 3 Pro's hinge mechanism though. Now a complex system built on 6 steel meshes with aluminum parts in between. They call it a watch band hinge, and it does look like one. It even rattles like one each time you adjust the screen's vertical viewing angle, and in fact each time you move the laptop around, something I found annoying at start but ended up ignoring after a while. Here for yourselves. At the same time this new hinge feels sturdy and allows basically countless working positions, while the older two hinge system did not give such freedom. However, I believe Lenovo went a bit too far trying to make the Yoga 3 Pro as thin as possible and somewhat sacrificed the screen frame's rigidity. That's visible when adjusting the viewing angles, which causes light ripples on the panel's lower left and right corners. And even more visible in tablet mode, when the screen flexes a millimeter or two and again pushes ripples into the panel. I can't say for sure whether that's going to affect the display on the long term or not, but it certainly got me concerned. The laptop's interior is covered in a smooth plastic with a dimpled pattern, which kind of reminds me of the Samsung Galaxy S5's back panel. It comes in black on all models, while the outer shell is available in silver, gold or orange. Overall, I dig the design and the feeling. I don't appreciate the keyboard's positioning though, which is placed low towards the laptop's front and leaves room for only a narrow palm rest. And that means there's not enough space for your wrist to lay comfortably on its surface. Luckily, the front lip is blunt and there are no sharp surfaces to worry about, but even so, I would have loved if Lenovo were able to push the keyboard ensemble higher. I should also mention that the keyboard is slightly lowered into the chassis, so the laptop won't lean on the keys when you have it in standard tablet mode. That's smart. And of course, the keys and the trackpad are only active in laptop mode, so they won't register accidental taps or presses. The laptop sides are covered in a black sheet of aluminum and house the ports and buttons. There's the card reader on the left, micro HDMI output, a USB 3.0 slot and Lenovo's new charging port, which also backups as an USB 2.0 slot when the computer isn't plugged in. On the left you get another USB 3.0 port, the headphone microphone jack, a volume rocker, a screen lock button and a power knob. And I swear Lenovo couldn't have put it in a more annoying position. It's right in the middle where you'll usually have your hand when grabbing the laptop. And it's not very stiff either, that's why I've probably pressed it by mistake at least a few dozen times in the last week and put the computer to sleep. Anyway, to wrap up with the I.O., there's also a tactile Windows Home button just beneath the display, somewhat useful in tablet mode. This aside, Lenovo put a 13.3 inch QHD Plus touchscreen on this Yoga 3 Pro with an IPS panel. The 3200 by 1800 pixel resolution leads to very sharp content and you'll probably want to scale fonts to 200% in Windows to be able to distinguish anything on the screen. Even so, not all third party apps will scale properly, so you'll have to deal with tiny texts and buttons from time to time. The panel is made by Samsung and no longer has the color issues of the Yoga 2 Pro model, so overall I'm confident you'll mostly like it. It's not very bright and doesn't output stellar contrast either, but I will tell you more about that in the written review on ultrabookreview.com, make sure to check it out, it's the first link in the description. Now let's get back to that keyboard. It feels and behaves a lot like the one on the previous Yoga Pro. The keys are smooth and have a slightly oval shape towards their lower side. They don't travel too much into the frame, but are sturdy and provide good enough feedback, especially once you get used to them. The keyboard is also backlit and you can turn the illumination on and off by hitting Fn and Space. On the other hand, Lenovo experimented with the keyboard's layout and left out the 6th row of F keys. F1 to F12 are obtained by hitting Fn plus the keys on the top row of numbers. 
There are still shortcuts for adjusting the screen's brightness, the volume or deactivating the trackpad. You'll just find them on other keys, which is not that big of a problem. But the lack of dedicated F keys will surely break this thing for many users. The trackpad is kind of small, but its glass surface feels nice and behaves properly, with one exception. This is a click pad and its top half is rather stiff, but the issue here is the occasional lack of response from physical clicks. Sometimes you'll just press the click pad, you'll hear the clicking sound, but nothing happens. Single taps work fine though, but double taps are not recognized. Annoying. Anyway, with all this out of the way, let's turn our attention on what the Yoga Pro can do for you. Keep in mind that this is not a final production model, but one of those samples given to journalists at the launch event in October 2014, so a few things might change later down the road. Again, see the written review on ultrabookreview.com for updates and extra details. For now, I could summarize I'm not impressed with the Intel Core M hardware implementation on this particular unit. Despite packing one of the fastest processors in this line, the Core M5Y70 with 8GB of RAM and a 256GB SSD, performance is not what I was expecting. And that's mostly because the hardware throttles way too fast. This Yoga 3 Pro handles basic activities fine, including light browsing, editing text and some photos or watching 1080p video content. However, some programs work smoother on this platform than others. For instance, Chrome is awful. Trying to watch YouTube clips or browsing in Chrome led to an appalling experience, with everything lagging and choking. Internet Explorer, on the other hand, works far better. It can deal with 1080p and even 4K YouTube streams, as well as medium browsing with up to 10 tabs open at the same time. And this is just one of the examples. The same can be said about playing videos with VLC Player, as opposed to playing them with Media Player Classic. Regardless, the harder throttles aggressively and there's little one could do about that. For instance, when trying to play games, both the CPU and the GPU drop to very low frequencies. In fact, I wasn't able to run properly any of the titles I've tried on this laptop, not even older ones like Dirt 3 on HD resolution with very low details. And the benchmarks are also affected. But we're not going to get in depth here. Let's check out the post on ultrabookreview.com for my impressions on the hardware and this Yoga 3 Pro's overall performance. On the other hand, the device runs mostly cool and quiet. There is a fan inside, placed in the laptop's upper right corner and pushing hot air through the very narrow cooling grill hidden behind the metallic hinge. And this fan is active pretty much all the time, but it's not very noisy. In fact, the Yoga 3 Pro is for sure quieter under load than its predecessor. But that won't matter much when it's also far slower. On top of that, it doesn't actually last longer on a charge, despite packing a low-power Core M platform. There's a 44 watt hour battery inside, and that translates in about 5, maybe 6 hours of daily use, and 4 to 5 hours of playing video. All this on balanced mode with Wi Fi on and the screen's brightness manually set to 70%, which is roughly 120 nits. I'll tell you more about the battery performance in the written post. We will also learn about the new charger, the speakers, Wi Fi module, and the webcam Lenovo put on this laptop, as there's nothing special about this to be worth including here. In fact, let's keep this video short and wrap it up. On the outside, the Yoga 3 Pro looks like something I want to buy. It's thin, light and mostly sturdy built, except for the screen's frame. On top of this, the metallic case and the fancy hinge mechanism give it a premium allure. And once you'll open it up, you'll also notice the nice screen, the comfortable keyboard and the accurate trackpad, although the non-standard keyboard layout will surely steer some of you away, as well as the stubborn click buttons. On the inside though, the Yoga 3 Pro is less of a success, at least based on this unit I got for tests here. The Core M implementation felt slow, wasn't as energy efficient as expected and not even fanless as I was hoping. In fact, the truth is you'll get better performance and even superior battery life with something like the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro or the Microsoft Surface 3, for a fraction of the price. So unless Lenovo manages to change that on the final release units and deal with the aggressive throttling that simply brings this laptop to its knees in anything but low level activities, I can't recommend buying this Yoga 3 Pro and especially not when it sells for $1300 or more for the beefier configurations. And that sums it up for now. Thanks for watching and make sure you check out the in-depth post on ultrabookreview.com for final conclusions and updates, as well as extra details that were not included in the video.